recording. And we are getting on the road again. On the road again. It's time to get on the road again. So I'm leaving Overland Expo. It is Monday. That was a ton of fun. Got to see a bunch of people I hadn't seen in a while. Meet a few people that I had wanted to meet for a while. Network a little bit, shoot a little bit of footage. Edit a bunch of footage, which was really nice. But yeah, I'm heading out of Flagstaff. I am going to reconnect to the BDR about 25 miles north and follow it all the way to the Grand Canyon. And then the plan today is to try and stay somewhere near Cameron. Probably at the Cameron Trading Post because it's right there. We'll see what happens and just have fun. But yeah, I'm gonna kill the cameras and get north to where I reconnect to the route. So I will catch you later. This is going to be rocky. <laughs> it's the Arizona BDR. And yeah, we'll just do the thing. Do the thing, thing, thing. I don't really remember a ton about this section. We had a really long day when Gavin and I did this because we ended up going Moon Crater all the way up through the res. So, I mean, we got through the Grand Canyon and everything. We ended up getting to Cameron at like three or four o'clock in the afternoon. But we had to get through Sunset Crater and all that first. And that took a while with him because he was on basically street tires. And then I am going to bypass the off-road part leaving Grand Canyon because it has that really gnarly descent uh, with all the rock steps and stuff. Apparently that's in even worse shape now than what it was when Gavin and I did it. <laughs> and it was in really bad shape when Gavin and I did it. <laughs> that was the only part of the route that he actually fell on. That was like riding a pogo stick for about 400 yards. And I just wouldn't want to do that by myself. So I'll follow the road out of the Grand Canyon, straight over to Cameron. And the plan right now is to stay in Cameron for two nights so that I can finish editing some videos and get stuff uploaded. I remember this section just being a lot of fun. Um, there was some really fast, flowy two-track. I just don't remember if it was before or after the turnoff for the Grand Canyon. But there was a bit there where both of us were kind of joking and you know, it felt like racing in the Dakar because you're just doing 60, you know, across some really fun two-track having a blast. Had to bypass around Sunset Crater. The table fire went straight through there and all of the roads are marked as closed. I have heard of people that have gone through there and made it, but I'm not gonna risk going up a closed road. It ain't, it's not worth it. This is pretty much like what um, all of section four is like. It's just all this volcanic crap. The trail's not necessarily difficult, you just can't get up to speed because you'll pinch flat. You know, when they start talking about rock gardens in here, they're talking about this stuff, you know? And then you cross into stuff like this, and it's just smooth and beautiful. A little bit sandy in places, but it's a ton of fun. You just gotta be careful because you get moving really fast, and then you cut back into a rock garden. <laughs> and it's sharp rocks. Thankfully most of these are like pretty embedded, so you don't have to worry too much about them rolling over on you. This 
let's see, got to hang out with Tim and Marissa, No Tears Frontiers, that was a lot of fun, talked to the Moscow people some more, ended up running into Ian from Big Rock Moto, he was real nice, good to chat with him, basically got him convinced he probably wants another Tenere, <laughs> can't blame him, <laughs> they're really nice bikes, I mean I talked to a bunch of people, but those, those were the main ones that have like a social media presence. Oh, that's really ate up. Wow. But yeah, that was, that, the whole event was just a lot of fun. You know, I didn't really, I, I didn't focus on the uh, off-road vehicle stuff because it's just not really my thing. Seeing everybody and just kind of hanging out. We're going to go first and go right through here. It's really washed out. Damn. It's like the main trail goes right and Grand Canyon goes straight. So I should be able to spot it pretty easily, but I don't know that I'm remembering that correctly. <laughs> I get the feeling I'm going to end up kind of staying somewhere in Utah for a, at least several days because there's still a good bit of snow up north. I don't know how well I'm going to be able to get through. My other option would be to get over to like the top half of Nevada and do it. I kind of don't want to do that because it puts me, it's just a bunch of extra miles for not a whole lot of gain, essentially. Damn, this little track is fun. It's flowy, there's little technical areas, and then it just opens back up. Little bits of sand here and there, but nothing crazy. You just flow. I love tracks like this. They are so much fun. Came over here. Ooh, that's a big old washout. Oh. Just about locked the front wheel on that one. We're gonna slow down because rock garden. Yep, yeah, coming down here. <laughs> Not much choice. I want to get up if I can. There we go. Yeah, those little technical bits are fun.
it wouldn't be so bad if it wasn't so loose. But there's just no... Oof. You're just bouncing off. said it on my previous Arizona BDR series like rocks just rocks <laughs> that's the Arizona BDR it's just rocks let's go up here Maybe still for a little bit stand straight here's the other trail Here we go. Look at a hiker. This is probably Arizona Trail. How's it going? Arizona Trail? Yep. Nice. Headed to Utah. Yep. Well, you're getting closer to the Grand Canyon. Yep. How long have you been going? Uh, we left March 30th. Oh, okay. That makes a little bit more sense. Yeah. You probably passed my buddy back here. I actually didn't. I didn't see anybody else, but um, I'm guessing you maybe turned left onto this not too far back. I've been, I've been following this fence line for quite a while. So this is part of the Arizona Backcountry Discovery Route, yeah. which is a off-road like vehicle route that goes from Coronado National Monument all the way up to Utah. It actually ends at the same campground that you end at. <laughs> yeah. Cool. You'll probably get there a little quicker though. A little bit. You're with the Warrior Expeditions crew? Yeah. I just saw your shirt. I went. I did the CDT with them last year. Really? Yeah. Awesome. Hang on. We got to get a picture together. I just saw the shirt. Yeah, I didn't see your shirt until right then. Let me get my helmet off again. Yeah, I was part of the group last year on the CDT. So, what's your name? Drew. I'm Brady. Music man, uh, trail name. Trail name was Mountain Man. Awesome. So, yeah, send that to Michelle. She'll love that. All right, Brady. Yep. Well, yeah, cool. She's gonna flip out. Uh, she's gonna laugh so hard at that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was I was joking coming down through New Mexico. I'm doing in a day what I would normally take me about a week of walking. Yeah. Been having fun though? Oh yeah, hell oh, yeah. So you're what? Two or three weeks from the finish? Uh, should be two. Yeah. That's cool. Here, smile real quick. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> Are there many people on trail or? pretty quiet uh, we're we're kind of the last um, are you kind of at the end of the bubble every once in a while somebody will pass us yeah uh, find out we're not exactly last, <laughs> yeah i haven't seen i've i saw several cdt hikers going through new mexico because i came down through new mexico yeah, we're at the end um yeah you're you know, we're not in a race i'm 61 no hell no it's not a race uh, eight years younger than me yeah any of these things it is a marathon <laughs> yeah i got i got up to about uh camp hale so about a thousand miles in and my ankle gave out on me so i had to get off trail we both had a couple issues and had to leave for a oh okay day. yeah but sometimes you need that time yeah she left for like three days and uh i slowed way down and she caught she caught right back up nice you know, you're in reach just trying to escape get back in it there it goes. Cool. Yeah, you don't want to lose that. <laughs> I will. She might have taken a break or something for lunch. Who knows? Lunch at this. Uh, at the water. Yeah, I don't blame you. All right. Well, stay safe. All right. Have fun. I'll send you a message once I hit. Once I see that and hit some reception. <laughs> All right. Take it easy.
That's so funny. That is the Warrior Expeditions crew for the Arizona Trail this year. He's doing good. He's got two weeks. Two weeks to the finish. That is so funny. Could not have planned that if I tried. So yeah, Warrior Expeditions. That's who I hiked the CDT with, or was sponsored by on the CDT. Wonderful organization. Consider supporting them if you would like. Even, you know, even though I wasn't able to finish the CDT, like it doesn't matter, they're a great organization. And that hike helped me so much. They sponsor about 40 veterans a year on various trails around the United States. The Arizona Trail is one of the shortest. I wanna say it's like about 700 miles, but it, it's also tough. I mean, the Arizona, you know, you're in the desert the whole time, basically. So yeah, I mean, the Arizona Trail's not easy just because it's a little bit shorter. Yeah, he started March 30th. It's now the middle of middle to end of May. He'll finish probably early June. Um, it's gonna be hot for his finish, but that's all right, you know? As long as you get there, doesn't matter how you finish, <laughs> if you finish. All right, going up here, a couple of big old dips. Bonk. Ooh, okay, that's third, that's all right. But yeah, I'll be at the Arizona border probably the day after tomorrow, because I'm gonna take a day off. And he's gonna be another two weeks. Just gives you an idea of how different your world is when you're on trails like this. Yeah, you see hikers like that out here. You need to be stopping. They're probably fine. I mean, you could literally save somebody's life. So ironically, the BDR and the Arizona Trail follow a lot of the same areas. They both start at Coronado National Monument or very close to it, and they end at the same campground, which is State Line Campground, at the Utah border. And so this is the only time where I know for sure I crossed the Arizona Trail, but I probably did quite a few times before. I just didn't see anybody because I was, I hadn't caught up to the hikers yet. So who knows, I might see some more. I'll almost certainly, good Lord. I'll almost certainly see some at the finish at the State Line Campground, because I did last time. I saw probably five or six people finish. That was really cool. This time I'm a little bit later a week makes all the difference. Like, you would be shocked at how much a difference, oh yeah, and then I pop out on the big road, um, a week makes in whether you see people or not. The bubble ain't that big, you know? There's not that many people going through here. The Grand Canyon's kind of crazy too, because you can't see it basically at any point as you're coming up onto it. So it makes a great reveal, but you definitely have that like, oh, we're just going across this flat open country. And then all of a sudden, oh my God, that is the biggest hole in the ground I will ever see in my life. And it just keeps going. Like that's the, that's the really crazy part about the Grand Canyon is there's a lot of areas on it where you basically can't see the North Rim. And so it just goes off into the distance and you lose it over the horizon. It is wild how big it is. Glad I flew the drone when I did because it's too windy and I'm going too fast now to get a good shot with it. Oh God, it is gorgeous out here. The weather's perfect. Hell yes. And we're gonna slow down because more rock gardens. It's going back to the more technical-ish two track. Three rules of BDR travel. Don't get hurt. Don't break anything you can't fix, and have fun. I didn't do so great on that first one. 
for the California BDR, but we're doing pretty damn good now. I know I got kind of quiet. I'm kind of just enjoying the riding. And it's also still super windy, so I'm not sure how much you'll actually be able to hear me. So just enjoy the cinematic for a little while. Because this is fun. I saw like three cows hunkered under a bush, and that's all I've seen today. Not that I'm complaining. So last time I came through here, Grand Canyon was actually closed. So we didn't even have the option of coming through here even if we wanted to. Well, we came through here, but we didn't go through the Grand Canyon. It's also why we ended up doing that really long day getting through the Navajo Reservation, because the Navajo Reservation was also basically closed. Cameron Trading Post was closed. I mean, hell, the gas station was only open for pay at the pump. You couldn't even go inside the gas stations most of the time. Not the case anymore. They're still taking lots of precautions, and I can't blame them, but things are open, so that's good at least. Ooh, that's deep sand. Damn really deep sand. I must have had held water or something. Oh, that was deep. Let's go up here. It's just very loose. There tends to be a hard bottom, so you can kind of get away with it most of the time, but every once in a while you just drive into something and you're like, oh, that's talcum powder. I'm not gonna go straight at all. Or like this, where I'm gonna have to follow the rut for a minute. Until I can pop out, there we go. What's funny is I wonder whether or not there's like an entrance station on this road. Cause it is kind of just the middle of nowhere. Like it's not, you know, it's basically a dirt road the whole way into the park. And I'm not sure if I'll know when I'm in the actual park. <laughs> but basically, welcome to the Grand Canyon. Not actually at the Grand Canyon yet, but we're getting there. Oh, that's loose. Oh, come on. That's really loose and heavily crowned. So it doesn't want to track straight. I want to get to the other side if I can. Oh, that's almost worse. That's deep. I think the middle might be my friend. Good lord. Yeah, we're gonna hey diddle diddle right up the middle for a little bit here. I still have no idea if I'm in the national park yet or not. I don't think I am. Because I have to imagine there's gonna be at least a sign. Because, you know, no drones and no camping outside of designated spots and I don't know, like I've never been in a national park where you weren't on paved roads the entire time. I've never, you know, I've never entered a national park from a dirt road. I don't know what it's gonna look like. Or even if I'm going to enter from a dirt road, like <laughs> I might go to pavement, I have no idea. And I'm not worried about paying like fees and stuff because I have an access pass. So all the national parks are free. So I wouldn't be paying anyone anything anyway. Keep trying to kind of keep an eye out for elk in the trees, but it's hard because I'm also trying not to drive off the road. God, this is so pretty back here. And I'm not even to the Grand Canyon yet. All right, here's the payable at South or East entrance. Yeah, not worried about that, because access pass. Oh, didn't see that one. Oh, God. 
should pop out onto the pavement just around this corner. Or if the National Park intentionally leaves it messed up so people don't use it as much. <laughs> Welcome to the Grand Canyon, the largest hole in the world. You can't see it, but it's on your left. You're right. Just starting to be able to barely see it through the trees over here. Moran Point. We're gonna give that a try. All right, get ready to have your minds blown by Florida tags going slow. <laughs> Welcome to the big ditch. The really, really big ditch. I don't know if you can see that, but like, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's go see more of the Grand Canyon. So I didn't know that, but this was basically the point at which the Spanish discovered the Grand Canyon. Obviously, the natives had found it a long time before that. They were living in it for a couple hundred years. <laughs> that would be crazy. Just roll out. Oh, <laughs> We ain't getting across there. And I'll stop at one of the other ones here in a minute and take the uh, other GoPro with me to show you, but that was cool. Ran into two students from CSU doing a college road trip. They were really nice. Talked to a guy who had just left Overland Expo also and a Ford Bronco. I'm glad I came through now because I forgot next weekend is Memorial Day weekend. This place is going to be packed. I gotta try and time it a little bit so that I don't end up going into Moab on Memorial Day weekend either, because that'll be a nightmare. I mean, my plan right now is to basically just kind of pass through, so if I do that, not so much of a big deal, but yeah, I don't want to hang out in Moab on Memorial Day weekend. It'll be packed to the absolute gills. She is. What's crazy is literally, I mean, the forest is right there. So you walk out of the forest, no warning, and it's just endless canyon. This is the eastern side of it. West of here, it goes 130 or something. God, it is beautiful though. See all the stratification layers, the Colorado River. You just see all of it. It's amazing. Oh. <laughs> they're, you're trying to see the canyon and they're trying to look at the bike. Right. So I took a picture of them looking at your bike and I'm going to put two boys in their toys. <laughs> that's funny. That is funny. Yeah, that's the first thing they did when they got out of the school. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Hey buddy, f off. <laughs> I had a pillion for a minute there. A raven decided to come down and hang out on the bike. That was kind of funny. All right, we're gonna go to Cameron. All right, so I'm only about 35 miles from Cameron. So I'm gonna get there pretty early. I'll fill up on gas, get some food, check in, and edit footage, and do laundry, basically, are the big things that I need to get done. There you go. 
this is one workout. I wish I could fly the drone, but nope. Oh, here's the exit. Alright, so I will probably sign off here. If you like this video, please subscribe. Consider giving me a like. Maybe even consider supporting me on Patreon or Ko-fi. And it helps my channel out with making more content like this. I really love doing this, and I want to keep doing it for as long as I can. Help me help you, <laughs> is basically what I'm saying there. And I will see you later.